Hey everyone. So I'm going to take a little time in this video to explain what you need to do to complete writing assignment one evaluation paragraph. Under this video, you're going to see a very brief set of, I, they're not really instructions, <laughs> it's more of explanation because there is an assignment packet attached to the assignment instructions. So if you scroll down underneath the instruction box, you'll see a little file that's attached and it says writing assignment one evaluation paragraph. If you click on that file and open it up, you're going to see a three page packet that explains what the assignment is, what you need to do to complete it, offers some potential topics for the paragraph and gives you a graphic organizer that you can use. I'm going to go through that packet with you right now so that you understand what each page is there for, what is required of you for the assignment, and what you actually need to submit for the assignment to get it graded. Okay, let me share my screen here. All right, so writing assignment one, evaluation paragraph. This first page right here explains the assignment. So for this assignment, you will be writing an evaluation paragraph. This is the type of paragraph that we learned about this week, okay? Here in week five, there were two lessons. The first was on rhetorical patterns. That was just a very quick lesson explaining that there are different types of writing in an academic setting, just like there are different categories of movies, different categories of music. We call those genres in those two contexts, but in an academic setting, we call those categories rhetorical patterns. There's narratives, description, um, classification, process analysis, cause and effect, literary analysis, there's also exemplification and evaluation and compare and contrast. After that lesson was a lesson on exemplification and evaluation because that's the type of paragraph you are being asked to write for writing assignment one. So in order to get started on writing assignment one, you have to go through that lesson. You have to go through the lesson on exemplification and evaluation. You need to look at the PowerPoint and watch the video lesson. Reading chapter nine can also be helpful because it gives a lot of good information on how to use examples to support your ideas, which you will need to do for this type of paragraph. But we are focusing in on an even smaller portion of exemplification writing. We're focusing on evaluation writing. So it's almost like evaluation writing is a subcategory of exemplification. So if I said, you know, one genre of movies is horror movies, and I told you that you had to write a horror movie, the possibilities would be endless. However, if I said you need to write a horror story that falls under the paranormal subcategory, then that would limit you. You would be, there would be specific requirements, specific things that you would be expected to have in a story that is not just a horror story in general, but paranormal horror stories specifically. Same idea here. Exemplification is sort of the overall broad rhetorical pattern that we're using, but we are focusing in on an even narrower field, which is evaluation writing. It's basically like a review, okay? But you have to go through that lesson on chapter nine. Go through the PowerPoint and watch the video. That lesson contains everything that you need to know in order to write this paragraph correctly, okay? 
Um, there are even sample paragraphs, sample evaluation paragraphs in the PowerPoint. Super helpful, right? Once you are confident that you understand the type of paragraph that you are supposed to write, you will then need to choose a topic. You need to choose a topic to evaluate in a well-developed paragraph. One single paragraph, not an essay, not two paragraphs, not three paragraphs, one single paragraph, okay? The topic you choose should be one that you are already familiar with. Do not conduct research for this. Do not use any outside sources whatsoever for this. Your paragraph your t should be, it needs to be based on your own personal experience and knowledge of your topic, right? This might seem overwhelming at first, but keep in mind, we've actually already done this type of writing before. You just didn't know that's what it was called. But if you go back to the journals for weeks one, two, and three, and possibly the week two discussion, you've already been asked to do evaluation writing. Those are potential topics for you. We'll talk a little bit more about topics here in just a moment. But once you understand the type of paragraph and then you've chosen your topic, you know, then you gotta get to work on writing the paragraph. And while you have the freedom of choosing the topic that you want to write about, you have to remember that you need to show that you can write a well-developed paragraph in general. All the things that we learned in weeks one through four, unity, support, coherence, sentence skills. Your paragraph needs to show that you can write a college level paragraph that sticks to all four bases. It also has to be done in the style of an evaluation paragraph, right? The first thing I'm going to do when I start looking at your submissions, before I really even start grading them, I'm going to look at them. I'm going to open each one up as you submit them and I'm going to read very quickly to see if you have done an evaluation paragraph. If it's not an evaluation paragraph, if you have misunderstood the type of paragraph you're supposed to write, I'm going to give it a zero and tell you to redo it. The zero will get replaced as soon as you submit the right type of paragraph, but I can't grade it until it is at least a proper type of paragraph. If you submit an essay or multiple paragraphs, you will get a zero and be asked to resubmit one single paragraph. Okay, even if the essay is an evaluation essay, you're not asked to write an essay, you're asked to write one single paragraph. The rubric that I use to grade this assignment requires that it be one single paragraph and that it be an evaluation paragraph, right? So please make sure that you understand what an evaluation paragraph is and please be sure that you do not make it harder than it has to be and just stick to one single paragraph, just like the sample paragraphs in the PowerPoint. But don't forget, again, those general paragraph rules that we learned about in weeks one through four. You need an effective topic sentence that clearly indicates the topic you're going to evaluate, as well as your judgment and the criteria that you're using, your main points. There should be three to four main points, your criteria. You need to have them fully explored and supported with your expert-like explanation and examples. And remember, this is all based on personal experience and personal knowledge of your topic. But you've got to provide specific 
and adequate support for every single one of your, your main point criteria. You need your supporting sentences to have coherence. You need to use transitions and connecting words to guide us from one idea to the next. You need to have a point sentence, a concluding sentence that wraps up the, the whole paragraph and reminds us of your overall focus. Make sure you have appropriate voice and tone. You don't want it to be too casual, but you don't want it to be super formal and stuffy either. You want your voice to come through, but it needs to be on an academic and professional level. Make sure that you have proofread for any grammar and mechanics errors, especially the items that we looked at in week three. So sentence fragments, run on sentences and comma splices, uh, getting rid of ineffective writing, misplaced and dangling modifiers, and making sure that you have com combined your ideas to create more complex sentences but without committing any of the other errors, okay? Um, have someone else help you proofread it if that's not your strong suit or if you're worried that you missed something, okay? The assignment needs to be submitted in a, in a document. This is a formal assignment. If you were told that you had to write a research paper, you would know that you'd have to type it in some sort of file. You're only writing one paragraph here but it's still formal. It needs to be typed up in some sort of formal document. Microsoft Word, Google Docs, a PDF, um, open document, right? If you do not have any of those options right now available to you, if you, if you don't use any of those options, I have provided instructions for how to use Google Docs under the Getting Started section of the course. It's free and there are videos to walk you through how to use it. So even if you have not been using any type of uh, formal document for any of the assignments up until now, for this one, you have to. Points will be deducted if it's not in the proper format, which includes being typed in some sort of formal document. It needs to be in the uh, an appropriate font. Um, so Calibri 11 point Times New Roman 12 point Arial 12 point. One of those three. That's it. It needs to be double spaced. Again, this is a formal assignment that gets graded with a rubric and part of the rubric is formatting. So if you fail to do any of these things, points will get deducted, okay? So that is what you're being asked to do. Write an evaluation paragraph. Make sure it's one single paragraph. Make sure it's truly an evaluation paragraph. You're gonna submit it in some sort of formal document. And that's all you submit is just the paragraph. That's it, okay? Now we talked about how you've already done some of this type of writing before. So let's talk about topics, okay? Which is what page two of the assignment packet is. It gives you potential topics. So first potential topic is a restaurant review. You did this in journal one. And if you look at my feedback on journal one, it might even tell you that you had some really good ideas that would work for writing assignment one evaluation paragraph. There is also a sample restaurant review on slide 14 of the chapter nine PowerPoint. So if you're interested in doing a restaurant review, look at that sample paragraph again, because it gives you a really good example of how to do that type of evaluation paragraph. You could do option two, a vacation spot review. You did this in journal two. So again, look at my feedback. See if I mentioned that you had a good idea that would work for this assignment. Option three is a store or shopping location review. 
you did that in journal three. See what my feedback on that says. Option four is a movie review or a TV show review. Um, you were asked to do this for the week two discussion. Um, students usually don't really uh, understand the sort of the, the specifics of what I'm asking you to do for the week two discussion. Um, so your week two discussion might not have provided you with as good of an idea as the journals might have, but still there might be something from the week two discussion that I mentioned would work for this assignment. There's also a sample movie review paragraph on um, slide 13 of the chapter nine PowerPoint. If you're thinking about doing a movie review or a TV show review, refer back to that sample paragraph. So mostly so you can see how to do this type of review without telling us too much about the plot of your movie or the storyline of your show. You want to focus on other elements, just like the sample paragraph does. You can do a video game review. There's an, an example of that on slide 12 of the chapter 9 PowerPoint. You could do a cell phone review. You could do a computer or a laptop or a tablet or an iPad, some other type of electronic device. You could do a review of one of those. You could do a review of a music artist. You know, like if you want to say something like Michael Jackson um, is the, the greatest, you know, music artist of all time. And then the three reasons why with examples, right? Um, or a band, it doesn't have to be an individual artist, it could be a group. You could do a school or college review. What are three things you look for in a good college? Then choose a specific college that you have been to and explain how it measures up. You could do a review on a, a shoe or a boot, specific brand or type of shoe or boot. You could do a review of a car or truck, right? So whatever make, year, make, and model, right? One thing you have to remember when you're thinking about your topic though, and this is in bold or in all caps down here, the topic you choose must be something you are already familiar with and know a lot about. Meaning it has to be a place you've actually been to, a product you've actually owned, etc. Remember, you're not doing any outside research for this, but you're also, you're providing a review of your topic. You can't review something you're not familiar with, right? I can't give a vacation spot review about Hawaii if I've never been there. It might sound amazing and it might be a place I really wanna go for various reasons, but I can't give a review of it if I've never actually been there. Right? So if you're choosing a restaurant review, it has to be a restaurant you have been to and that you are familiar enough with that you can come up with specific examples as to why it's a good restaurant or a bad restaurant. You can do a bad review. If you're doing a vacation spot review, it has to be a vacation spot you have actually been to. If a store or shopping location review, it has to be a place you have been to. A movie review or TV show has to be one that you've already watched. A video game review, one you've already played. A cell phone review, it needs to be a specific type of cell phone that you have used. So, you know, it can't be the newest model that you don't have yet. It has to be a model that the, the model you currently have or one that you've had in the past. Same thing with computer, laptop, tablet, or iPad. It has to be a device that you either currently own or have owned in the past. Music artist, someone you are really familiar with and that you are knowledgeable enough about. Remember, no research. School or college review, again, has to be a place you've actually attended. Or it could be one that maybe like your child has attended, like if you want to go with like a private school or something that you're, or even a public school, 
you know, you could say such and such school district is awful because of blah, blah, blah. Um, but it has to, but you as a parent need to be very familiar with, you know, what makes the, the school good or bad. Um, a shoe or boot review, car or truck review, it has to be products that you have owned and used. You're providing a review. Why do people read reviews? If I'm going to go on Yelp and look at a specific restaurant that I'm thinking about having dinner at, why am I going there? Why am I reading the reviews? I want other people's opinions based on their personal experiences about this place so that then I can decide for myself if it, if it seems worth it. So it has to be something you are familiar with that you have already experienced or owned. Um, and you're providing the reader with the examples and information they need to make an informed decision for themselves. Right? Okay. Those 11 topics are just some of the most common ones that I've had students write about. You are not required to choose any of those 11. If you have another idea in mind, it's, you know, maybe shoot me a message and just say, hey, I was thinking about this topic. Do you think it would work? And I'll let you know. But I have to say, go back to those journals from weeks one through three and see if you already have something in the works that you could then use for this assignment. Work harder, not, or work smarter, not harder. Don't, you know, if you already have the ideas, use it, use that to your advantage, make it a little easier on yourself. Now I'm not saying that you would be able to necessarily just copy and paste the journal, you know, but the ideas might be there. Okay. All right. The third page of the assignment packet is what we call a graphic organizer. You're going to see right here, highlighted in yellow, it says you are not required to use this graphic organizer. It does not get submitted and there is no grade for it. It is simply to help you plan your paragraph. And you can see, you know, what's your, you know, your point in your judgment, right? of your to whatever topic you've chosen, what's your first criteria going to be? What's your first main point? What's your second? What's your third? What's your fourth? And then what's the impact? Are you giving it a, a you know, a good recommendation or a bad recommendation? So this is just to sort of help visually map out your ideas. Again, it's just there for you to use if you choose. Remember the thing that actually gets submitted is the paragraph. So once you have, you know, gone through the lesson on exemplification and evaluation, and you have gone back to your journals or, and dis, or decided on a, a different topic, maybe you've used this graphic organizer right here, then it would be time to type up the paragraph. On the PowerPoint or in the PowerPoint, on exemplification and evaluation up on slide 11. I think we'll go. There we go. It shows you how to sort of organize the paragraph. You want to begin with your topic sentence. The topic sentence should introduce your subject, present your judgment plus your criteria. For instance, if I were doing a restaurant review, the first sentence of my paragraph, my topic sentence would say, Olive Garden is a great place to eat because of the cleanliness, the service, and the food. You don't, you don't want background information. You don't want to lead into your topic. This isn't an essay. Remember, the first sentence of a paragraph is the topic sentence, and it needs to clearly tell the reader the specific focus of the paragraph. Your topic, your judgment, and your criteria. Then the bulk of the paragraph will be your support sentences. Whatever the first criteria was that you listed, you're going to talk about that first and provide your supporting evidence. 
I listed cleanliness first. So the first thing that makes Olive Garden a great place to eat is the cleanliness. And then I would provide specific examples of why I think it's so clean. You know, tables, chairs, floors, bathrooms, what have you. Then I would move into the second one that I, my second criteria I listed, which was the service, right? And then I would give specific examples based on my own experience at Olive Garden as to why the service is so good. Then I would move to my third criteria, which was the food. And I would provide specific examples of the items on the menu that I think are really good, right? If I have more than three criteria, and you might, and it's okay, then I would do the same thing. I'd move to the fourth one that I listed and provide specific examples. And then finally, once I had discussed all of my criteria, I would end with a, a concluding sentence. Remind the readers of my judgment, remind them of my criteria, and leave them with my expert advice. And again, this is just one paragraph, okay? Look back at slides 12, right? This is the video game review. This is the movie review. This is the restaurant review. Look, they're, they're all three were just one single paragraph. That's what you need to do as well. Even if you choose a top, you know, you might not be doing a video game or a movie or a restaurant, but these three sample paragraphs still give you a good example of how to organize the paragraph the way that slide 11 explains, okay? All right, so again, once you have gone through the lesson in week five on exemplification and evaluation, and you've decided on your topic, possibly one that you used in a journal from week one through three, then you're gonna type up the paragraph. You're gonna make sure that it has all the elements that are required of an evaluation paragraph, as well as all of the requirements for a paragraph in general. Unity, support, coherence, sentence skills. You're gonna type it up in some sort of formal document and that is what you're gonna submit. One single paragraph in a formal document. Make sure it's only one single paragraph. Make sure it's truly an evaluation paragraph. If you at least get those two things right, then I can grade it. I will give you very detailed feedback on your paragraph. I will actually download the file that you submit and I will go in and type comments on in, in the paragraph. And then I'll attach that to the feedback. And if you aren't happy with the grade you get, you'll get a chance to revise it. You get to use my detailed suggestions to improve it if you want. So I want you to take the assignment seriously and I want you to try to do as good as you can the first time around because if you do really good the first time around then you don't have to worry about revising it. But I don't want you to stress out too much about this. Just remember it's one single paragraph and you just have to make sure it's the right kind of paragraph. Beyond that, you know, we can work with that, okay? All right, if you have any questions, run into any problems, please reach out to me, um, but have faith that, that you can do this. Use the lesson and use the journals, use everything that's already there to help you. But I am here if you need anything, um, otherwise, you know, I can't wait to see what you guys produce for this assignment.